talk about work drama. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 talk show co-hosts who hate each other. For this list, we're looking at various co-hosts from a variety of reality and talk shows who allegedly don't get along. At least not in a friendly, let's go get a drink after work kind of way. Who that is, is directing the show? Let's go to commercial! Number 10, Adam Savage and Jamie Heineman, Mythbusters. I always enjoyed seeing Adam in pain. Oh! One is loud, exaggerated, and deliriously wacky. The other is reserved, quiet, and introspective. It's no surprise to hear that they were never exactly friends. Adam and Jamie don't necessarily hate each other, but it's also a well-known open secret that they do not get along on a personal level. Heinemann told Entertainment Weekly that they have never gone out to dinner in the 25 years they've known each other, and also told Access Hollywood that there are times when they, quote, really dislike dealing with each other. The fact is, is at the end of a couple of hours, we'll always have a story that we're both proud of. And that in and of itself is fun. As for future seasons of Mythbusters, yeah, we probably shouldn't count on that. No, I don't think Jamie and I will continue to work together on other projects. Number 9. Ryan Seacrest and Brian Dunkelman, American Idol Hello everyone and welcome to American Idol, the show that's on a mission to discover the next superstar. Do you remember when Ryan Seacrest had a co-host? We wouldn't blame you if you forgot, as it was only for one season way back in 2002. Brian Dunkelman co-hosted American Idol with Seacrest during its first season, although it seems like he absolutely hated it. I think I knew I wanted to leave the show on the first day. There was a stretch of about an hour where kid after kid came out just bawling, and I had never seen anything like that. It's been said that he didn't like the way the contestants were treated, which reportedly included staging arguments and reshooting reaction shots with fake tears. Emotionally, it was really difficult for me, probably more so for me and Paula because we've been those kids, you know? We've been in that situation. We know how hard it is. He eventually quit the show, just before he supposedly would have been fired, and still holds animosity towards Seacrest. He threw a lot of shade before the 2018 Oscars, retweeting critical tweets and explicitly referencing a sexual harassment claim against Seacrest. Number 8. Tamar Braxton and co-hosts The Real Following a music career that included Tamar Braxton being dropped by one of her record labels, she began hosting the Fox talk show The Real. I was just so miserable in my skin because I'm like, I know I want to sing, I know there are you know, things that I really, really want to do with my life, yeah. but it seems like it's not working for me, it's not happening for me. Unfortunately, she was fired in 2016, and no definitive reason was ever given, though a behind-the-scenes betrayal was hinted at. And was it the result of one of the women on the at the table? I mean, it has been said, but um, I I don't know for sure. Uh, I know I'm for sure not going to go on a press tour like some other people have. Despite this, Braxton pursued music and acting, but the subject of her firing continued to come up. In fact, after appearing on The Wendy Williams Show in 2019, allegations of a steamy feud between her and her co-hosts were spoken of again, with Braxton referring to her co-hosts as, quote, tatty people who talked behind her back. And so what if I was in a situation where I'm doing the Braxtons and it's very stressful, and then I'm doing this other show where people are cat being catty behind my back? Like, oh. what kind of person would I be right oh. now sitting on this couch? Braxton followed up her appearance with now-deleted social media posts that implied her former co-presenter Lonnie Love was the one responsible for orchestrating her termination. The real hosts then fired back on social media and the show itself. So it seems like this feud is far from over. Number 7. Leah Remini and Sharon Osbourne, The Talk Leah Remini and Holly Robinson Pete were both dismissed from The Talk in 2011, and Remini immediately placed the blame at Sharon Osbourne's feet. She took to Twitter and claimed that, quote, Sharon thought me and Holly were ghetto, which Osbourne in turn called, quote, false gossip. Osborne also referred to the allegation as, quote, unprofessional and childish behavior, and the public feud continued from there. A few years later, Remini also claimed in her memoir that Osborne called her, quote, a loser, with, quote, nothing else going on in her life. We're all women, we all know. However, it seems like Remini has since moved on from the feud, as she told Howard Stern in 2015 that she was not angry with Osborne. Not only that, she also seemed to take responsibility for the firing, saying, quote, I wasn't my best self there. Certainly there were things on the other side that contributed to it, but to come off as a victim is just not something that I want to do. Number 6. Steve Ducey and Gretchen Carlson, Fox & Friends Gretchen Carlson was a leading figure in taking down Fox CEO Roger Ailes after accusing him of sexual harassment. Filing a sexual harassment lawsuit, claiming her refusal of his unwanted sexual advances cost her 
her job. This, in turn, launched a flurry of similar harassment claims, and Ailes eventually resigned from his post. Her sexual harassment claim also implicated Steve Ducey, her co-host on Fox & Friends before she left the show in 2013. According to the allegation, Ducey, quote, "...engaged in a pattern of severe and pervasive sexual harassment against Carlson." This included openly mocking her, acting in a sexist and patronizing manner, and treating her like, quote, "...a blonde female prop." Despite this, Ducey is still employed at Fox & Friends, and even received a 12 out of 10 loyalty rating from Donald Trump. Number 5. Clinton Kelly and Stacey London – What Not to Wear Denise, I'm Stacey. And I'm Clinton. And we're, we're from, from TLC's TLC. What Not to Wear! Kelly and London spent nine seasons together as the co-hosts of What Not to Wear, a TLC reality show where stylists slash consultants gave a physical makeover to a nominated participant. I mean, I know that I just scratched the surface on all of what fashion entails, but I think I had just such a good, like, straight up hill course this week. <laughs> when Clinton Kelly took over for Wayne Scott Lucas after season one, he found a personal rival in Stacey London. In his memoir entitled I Hate Everyone Except You, he detailed his personal relationship with London. He says he immediately found the show, quote, mean-spirited and judgmental, and took an instant disliking to his co-star, which came about from a combination of the long hours, persistent proximity to each other, and London's supposed constant vying for the spotlight. Thank you for telling us what we already knew, but we're, we're really glad that you now realize it. In the end, Kelly states that it, quote, would be just fine if he never saw her again. Number 4. Kelly Osborne and Juliana Rancic – Fashion Police It seems like Sharon isn't the only Osborne embroiled in a personal feud. Fashion Police co-hosts Kelly Osborne and Juliana Rancic have also thrown their share of shade. Much of the rancor stems from the 2015 Academy Awards, when Rancic stated that she felt that Zendaya, who was sporting dreadlocks, quote, smells like patchouli oil. Someone else chimed in, quote, or weed, and the blame was placed on Osborne. I love Zendaya's style, and I love when she has the little hair. She just had it. I think this, she's such, she has such a tiny frame that this hair to me overwhelms her. Like, I feel like she, she smells like patchouli oil. <laughs> or we. However, Osborne took to Twitter to clear her name, stating, quote, I do not condone racism in a not-so-subtle jab at her co-workers. She subsequently left the show over the debacle, and later told the rap that she does not like Rancic. In her words, I will never admit to liking Juliana because I don't. I don't think she's a good person, and I think she's a liar. Number 3. Rosie O'Donnell and Elizabeth Hasselbeck – The View Here's how it gets spun in the media. Rosie, big, fat, lesbian, loud Rosie, attacks innocent, pure Christian Elizabeth. Yeah, and I'm not doing it, it for the rest of the show. Let me do it. it! The View is full of drama. Rosie O'Donnell wasn't a fan of Whoopi Goldberg and reportedly stated that working with her was, quote, the worst experience she's ever had on live television. If O'Donnell wasn't feuding with Goldberg, she was fighting with Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Their bitter feud stretches all the way back to 2007, when O'Donnell left the show earlier than previously announced over an on-screen incident involving her working relationship with Hasselbeck. Do not call me a coward, Rosie. It was cowardly I do not yesterday. hide. It was not cowardly. It was, it was honest. Uh, what is cowardly? Is there Asking no commercial in this show? Asking. Asking. I'll tell you what's cowardly. When it was announced that Rosie would be returning in 2014, Hasselbeck was quick with a condemnation. What could ruin a vacation more than to hear news like that? Things got even more awkward when Rosie revealed in a 2019 book that she had a non-sexualized, quote, crush on Hasselbeck, and that there were, quote, underlying lesbian undertones on both parts. Hasselbeck, in turn, called O'Donnell's comments, quote, disturbing, wrong, and offensive. Number 2. Ann Curry and Matt Lauer – Today From NBC News, this is Today with Matt Lauer and Ann Curry. Ann Curry and Matt Lauer served as co-anchors of The Today Show from June 2011 to June 2012. She tearfully announced on air that she was leaving the show, and speculation as to why immediately began to dominate pop culture consciousness. New York Magazine placed the blame on Lauer, saying, quote, Matt simply didn't like her. The magazine claims they had no off-air chemistry, and that Lauer ignored Curry's requests for advice. She later appeared on CBS This Morning and was frustratingly cagey about the behind-the-scenes drama, although she did reveal that she, quote, wasn't surprised by the sexual abuse allegations aimed at Lauer. I am not surprised by the allegations. She also claims to have warned NBC executives about Lauer's controversial behavior five years before he was fired. 
Geez, how much must it suck for you to really not get along with your co-host? Well, I guess it's the same thing if you really don't get along with anyone you work with, only in this case, people get to witness the animosity, or you have to fake it. Anyway, our number one duo's relationship was famously acrimonious behind the scenes, and they definitely faked it for the cameras. So let's look through some honorable or dishonorable mentions, and then we'll see who that is. An all-star cast and one all-star interview. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Brady Bunch. No, I mean, Access Hollywood. I'm Nancy O'Dell. Hi, Marsha. Hi, folks. I'm Pat O'Brien. I know you're angry. I you get it that you're angry. angry that Trump's president, like a lot of people are. I'm angry are, about every single but thing I don't he's doing. think yelling at me is going to fix the problem. A decision was made for various Ooh, reasons Barbara, not to renew. really going to go here. Do we care at this point, my sister? <laughs> yes, we really I do. I mean, I honestly Star, don't. You may not, but our people keep saying it's been six years. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Kelly Ripa and Michael Strahan, live. I hear that you have some news. Yeah, some news. Been in news that I am, I'm leaving this show. In 2016, it was announced that Michael Strahan was leaving live with Kelly and Michael to pursue a co-anchoring opportunity on Good Morning America. However, this announcement came as a complete surprise to his co-host Kelly Ripa, who was reportedly left, quote, completely blindsided and furious over the surprise announcement. In the sense that it started a much greater conversation about communication and consideration, and most importantly, respect. She subsequently took time off work, and their personal relationship completely fell apart. They are now on unfriendly terms, with Michael saying, quote, Toward the end of it all, we didn't really communicate that much. He also adds, at one point, I think we were friends, implying that they are no longer. My relationship with her, I, I, I don't know what it is, to be honest with you. And I wish her well, though. I really do. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.